Hello, I'm Shannon, and I'm going to talk about temporal lobe epilepsy and mysticism through the lens of my own experience. So, when I was five, I had a tough case of the chicken pox and a high fever, and amidst that one day, I saw an enormous oncoming train. It was terrifying and it lasted for a while. And after I recovered from the pox, um, I started experiencing myself as really tall or very small when I woke up. Um, sometimes things would feel very heavy or light. And the, you know, the common refrain of my childhood was earth to Shannon, you know. When I was 10, I saw the light and eternity for the first time. It was a pretty big experience for me at that age. And I became very religious. I wanted to pray a lot. I asked my mom to drop me off at church before school so I would go and pray, and then I would walk to school. And my desire really was to reconnect with God the way I felt that God had reached reached out to me when I saw when the light you know, became clear. And through my teenage years, I was fortunate to see angels and sweet beings. And when I was 19, I went on a come and see to the Missionaries of Charity in the Bronx where you stay in the convent. And it was really cool. I mean, we, we prayed a lot, but we also did a lot of work for their, um, for their uh, home, home for men. And there was just a lot of cleaning and cooking, and I felt like I was doing good work. Um, there wasn't much sleep involved at all. They go to bed at like 10.30 and wake up at 4.20. It's something unbelievable, but I couldn't really function on that amount of sleep. And we were praying one day to Mary in a small chapel room. And I felt her presence come through the window. And it was this sweet, sweet dense, perfumey, honeyed, precious moment. It was one of the highlights of my life. When I was 21, I was crossing the street on my bicycle. I was hit by a car and the left side of my head hit the car and then I was propelled a long way and then I was wearing a helmet and hit the top of my head and then skidded down the road. Um, it was a pretty bad accident. Uh, after my head hit the left side of the car, which I don't have any recollection of the first half of it, but when I was flying through the air, I had the opportunity to see the net that envelops this creative reality. And it's a web. It's, it functions like a web. It is organized like a grid. And that, that web grid, like the net of Indra, it, it coagulated around me. It's, it's intelligence, it's love, and it's witnessing coagulated around me as an angel and protected my body in a way that I could only describe as miraculous because some of the bystanders thought it was a fatality, um, the accident, but I came out pretty well considering the, the forces and the angles involved. Three months after that, I was in a cycling accident. I was training for triathlon, so I was biking, I was biking a lot and I just crashed my bike probably because of the first head injury um, and 
I got another concussion, which is bad for your brain. Um, a year after that, I lost consciousness for the first time when I was traveling on an international trip. And through the years, um, there were just a number of challenges. I, I talked to a doctor who told me that I should think about seeing someone for epilepsy and think about seeing someone for epilepsy. And I just thought that is not a direction I want to go in. And so what I did instead was I just stopped like, um, being connected to electrical things. I didn't have a phone. I didn't look at screens, computers, televisions. I avoided buildings and I found that to be pretty effective um, for staying well. And yet I didn't really resolve anything. I just always had to kind of be on the lookout for it. So two years ago, I was finally in a neurologist's office and they did an EEG and called and said, you have to get right back in here. And they said, you know, we think you have a seizure disorder. And I was like, okay. Um, a month after that, a month after that, I was looking at that sheet that they give you like problems addressed today and it said epilepsy on it and I was like I can't believe they diagnosed me with epilepsy I was really upset about it like I felt like they've got a lot of nerve like I, but so I started reading about epilepsy I started reading about temporal lobe epilepsy I read the book Seized by Eve LaPlante which I think is a really good book for anyone who's been diagnosed with temporal lobe epilepsy or knows someone who has, because it gives both the clinical and then the personal experience. The hard part for me though, was reading about experiences, the hard part for me was reading about myself from a clinical perspective like people with temporal lobe epilepsy will have religious delusions. Um, they may see the Virgin Mary. They might see colors vibrate. And it kind of gave me an identity crisis because I started to look at my own self with from the lens, like from the medical lens. And that was difficult because my whole internal world was always the mystical. Like I read Evelyn Underhill, the, that book, um, Mysticism. And I just felt so free and happy when I read that because I felt like it had described my reason for living. To be a mystic. Because it was all that I really had. I mean, mysticism almost interrupted every other facet of my life. And now with this lens of temporal lobe epilepsy, I felt this terrible sense that maybe I had been deluded for decades and that I didn't know what was real and that perhaps perhaps all of the God that was my greatest sense of reality wasn't real at all. Maybe it was just a trick of the brain. So I sat with that for a while and it didn't feed my soul and I thought maybe there's more to it. There's always more to it. Like in life, reality is always more complex, more extraordinary, more loving, more phenomenal, more mysterious than our own minds can, can, like, can conjure up. So 
so I started wondering, well, what if I don't know what this is and maybe it's not what it seems to be? So I've started thinking about these temporal lobe seizures in a different way. I've started thinking about it like a window, a window through mundane reality where one can reach out and touch something greater and more real, which could be the collective subconscious. It could be the higher realms. It could be many different things that we can touch. But what if, this is the question I would ask you if you've been diagnosed with temporal lobe epilepsy or you think you have it or you know someone that does. You know, what if it's an avenue that you walk on? in order to touch something more profound. Even, even when you're having like a hellish one, like I remember one where I was falling through these different layers of hell and I was like, no, 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 it's terribly scary. Uh, but I think it's still real. I think there was something real to that. Because, you know, status quo reality, it's pretty mundane and that's, it's not that reliable either. I mean, we live collectively with an unfathomable amount of, um, what's the word when you, we have so much magical thinking in our culture that we I don't think that we fully realize it and we have a lot of holdouts hatred biases um, there's just a multitude of violence in our language itself um, delusion all that is part of the status quo reality so maybe it's not that serious of a problem to have that reality that collective reality interrupted to see something else because if you think about some of the leaders thought leaders spiritual leaders that have had temporal lobe epilepsy like Muhammad St. Paul Moses Socrates and then artists like the poet Tennyson and the writer Edgar Allan Poe, and of course, Vincent van Gogh. Like, all of those people brought something new into the collective experience. And so, maybe that's, you know, that, that's kind of what mysticism is. It's just bringing something new. It's the growing edge of human consciousness. God, I think God is the growing edge of human consciousness. So if you can interrupt the sort of like old formulations and then bring something new from the other side of the veil, um, I think you're behaving as a mystic. And if it's a temporal lobe seizure that makes that happen, then that's okay. <laughs>